What if I were to say, learn from me, for I am humble? The problem would be that I myself could not believe what I was saying. I would know that anything I said about my own humility would be a form of bragging. I might do it with the most subdued tone and downcast eyes, but my message would still be, hey, look at me, I'm being humble. I know my weakness, my fears, my stupidity, my stubbornness, my ignorance, and my laziness are too much a part of me to leave much room for anything about which I can brag. I have plenty of reasons to be humble. If I tried to brag about anything, least of all humility, those who love me would laugh, others would sneer, both would be correct. But Jesus could get away with it. Why do we let him claim to be humble when we know how hollow our own claims to humility are? It's important to see the context of Jesus' claim to humility. When I claim to be humble, either to others or to myself, I'm thinking about myself. When Jesus spoke about being humble, he was talking about others. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. The humility of Jesus is an element in his service to others. He presents his humility as evidence that they can trust him to care for them. They can take his yoke upon themselves, knowing that he will make it an easy load. We sometimes seem to think of humility as a way of speaking, in subdued, self-deprecating tones, or even as a cringing posture. Jesus shows us today that humility is neither words nor appearances, but a quality that shows itself in deeds. Humility is the quality in us that enables others to trust that we will help them bear the burdens of life. People will know they can trust me to help them because I actually help without thought of inconvenience to me. We sometimes confuse humility and shyness. Shyness makes me want to be invisible. However, Humility requires being noticed. How can others know they can trust my service if they never see my service? However, what is done is more important than who does it. It is my service that they should note, not me. I should be humbly noticeable and noticeably humble, drawing attention to the work of God who uses me as an instrument. So. If I wish to be able to say with Jesus that I am humble, I must shut up and get to work. There is no shortage of people in my world who are heavily burdened. They are lonely, they are sick, they are hopeless and unaware of the love that God has for them. Why should I worry about their burdens when I have enough of my own? The Nobel Peace Prize winning organist, theologian, and medical missionary Albert Schweitzer once told a group of young people, I don't know what your destiny will be, but one thing I know, the only ones among you who will be really happy are those who have sought and found how to serve. If I hope to share the kind of joyful closeness to the Father that Jesus shows in the prayer that opens today's reading, there is no other way than the way of humble service. I must put the needs of others before my own. When I do so, another's burden is eased, but I too benefit from finding a new peace of heart that eases my own burdens. When I can be humble in this way, then the words of Jesus apply to me. All things have been handed over to me by my Father and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. When I imitate the serviceable humility of Jesus, I come to know God in a new way, the way of Jesus. The world around me may be in turmoil, but I will be in peace and calm, not because I'm apart from the world, but because I am sharing God's deep love for that world.